in the teens of years, 19 years or something, 18 years, she was stooped over. Jesus attributed that. They would have put a medical thing on it today. But Jesus attributed that to Satan having her bound these many years. There was an unseen force. Amen. And I don't believe that everything's the devil, but many things are. And uh, if you go out, you know, not properly clothed, out in freezing rain, you can get a cold. That's not necessarily the devil. Unless he was just affecting your thinking <laughs> to go do such a thing. <laughs> but <clears throat> the enemy is at, uh, at work doing a lot of things. Uh, that people never realize that he's there doing those things. He's kind of camouflaged. <clears throat> Praise God. But I, I believe that, you know, a lot of times those hindrances uh, are the enemy trying to prevent us. He'll stop you from coming to church if he can I had a mess of youngins myself, you know, my wife and I did. <clears throat> and we got to noticing our kids would act up some of the worst times right before we went to church. Seriously. They'd be so bratty sometimes right before we was going to church. The Lord, wants you, the Lord wants you to come to church and get a blessing. But the devil, he knows if he can get you all stirred up, you know, and just stop you from going all together. Or if you do go, you won't have your mind on worshiping the Lord. Yeah, he'll do those things. And uh, people that are unconscious of that there is an enemy at work against us, you know, fails to uh, realize that. And uh, they'll beat their kids or something. <laughs> But sometimes they need a good spanking, you know. I was thinking, I went over to see Sister Rosalinda the other day when she was in the hospital. And, uh, you know, I just felt like she needed to fight the good fight of faith. Everything is not quick. Sometimes the Lord just removes things instantaneously and sometimes the Bible, one scripture tells us in the Psalms he teaches our hands to war did you know that that means that we are involved in it and everything some of the things that we face in our life have to be fought some things we pray to the Lord and it's just gone thank you Jesus for those times but I'm here to tell you something he teaches our hands to war not against people but against principalities against powers against spiritual wickedness in high places we learn to to fight this spiritual fight and the way that we do that he remember what Paul said Put on the whole armor of God. Armor's for soldiers, folks. And he that warreth entangleth not himself in the affairs of this life, that he may uh, please him who's called him to be a soldier. If we're soldiers, we fight. We're not, you know. If we was in a circus, we'd be a clown or something. But he don't call us clowns. He calls us soldiers. <clears throat> and I just... When I was going up to see Rose Linda there, that, that, that scripture kept coming to me. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight Amen. the good, tell Rose Linda to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Adrian, amen. Fight it. Fight it through prayer. Amen. Seeking God, fight it. 
Jesus, t- you know, whenever he, whenever Jesus came up to people and they were had demons in their lives and stuff, you know, he he attacked them with his word. He commanded them. You know, he was actively involved in driving the enemy out. And he is our example. He said, for whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things that that he saith, shall come to pass. That's what Jesus said. And he didn't say that the Lord would do it. He said, you... He that believes. And so we got to get to that place. We need to personally get close to God. Amen. And when we get close to God, we're going to have that ability to have authority. Amen. If we're not walking close to God, we're not going to have any authority to our, to our word. Right. We've got to walk personally with the Lord. And when we do, we can start speaking to those things to be removed. Amen. You know, Jesus' word, it says, was with power. For with authority, he he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out with authority. And we have his name upon us. But we can't be like the seven sons of Sceva that take the, G, the name of Jesus and use it against somebody when we don't have a walk with him. That evil spirit jumped on them and whipped them, drove them out of the house naked. They were using the same name Paul was. The difference was Paul had a walk with God, and they didn't. Amen. So if you're praying about something, and it's not just gone, Fight the good fight of faith. Condition yourself. Get, the Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You resist the devil. You resist the devil. Sometimes it's more than just praying to the Lord. We need to do that too. Praying to the Lord. But you resist the devil. But you've got to have your life submitted you got to have your life submitted. And that's what we need to focus on, submitting our lives. <clears throat> Amen. Some battles are won easy, but some are not won easy. All can be won. I said all can be won. But it didn't mean all. The disciples brought uh, a person to Jesus They had been casting out devils. But while they had walked with Jesus, they didn't fast. Did you know that? While Jesus walked the earth, the disciples did not fast. Jesus fasted. And there are some things, according to the Lord, that do not come out. You do not get the victory over. They do not come out except by prayer and fasting. That means you condition yourself, spiritually condition yourself, getting close and consecrated to God, right? When you're fasting, it's not to condition, it's not to just get an answer, it's to condition you. It's for your benefit, to get you to where you're not fleshly. You're submitted to the Spirit of God. And Jesus, the, the disciples could not cast that spirit out of that man's son. And they came to Jesus, why could not we cast him out? He said, this kind comes not out. This kind. There are some kinds that are this kind. There's other kinds. It's just like people. There's some people that run from any kind of fight. But there's some old boys that stand up and fight you. Huh? There are. And they'll take a beating sometime before they'll leave. Or throw in the towel. Sometimes it takes a while to whoop some of them. Run it. All right. And sometimes you even get knocked down some, get a little bloody. Right? Come on. 
If you quit, you never win. But if you're willing to fight, if you're willing to fight, Jesus said, this kind comes not out but by prayer and fasting. And Jesus spoke to that spirit because he was pray, prayed up and fasting. And that spirit came out. Had a fit when it came out of that boy. They thought he, the kid was dead. I mean, made a big scene when the spirit came out of that boy. And they took him up like he was, thought he was dead. And, but he wasn't. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, amen. When you pray about something and you don't see the results, you may need to realize that I need to get involved in this. God wants me to get involved in this and fight. He's teaching me to war. He's teaching me to fight the fight of faith. He's teaching me. Amen. Well, that's the truth. <coughs> Praise God. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. I guess it is some, but <coughs> amen. Well, let's turn in our Bibles this morning. Brother Demon, you're so handy. I'm going to turn to James. That's not on my list. Is that okay? The last chapter of James. The very last two verses of James chapter 5. Amen. Praise God. Now he, James is, is giving this word to the Christians, right? Amen. And he closes out his letter with this. He said, brethren... Talking to the Christians, that's the brethren. If, in, if any of you, you, you who? Brethren, Christians, Christians. If any of you do err, that means go aside from, right? Go stray from, from the truth. Everybody say the truth. If any of you Christians, he's talking, do err, go aside from the truth, and one convert him, bring him back. To the truth, right? Let him know, the one that does this, that he which converteth the sinner. See, the one that left the truth becomes a sinner. Did you know that? You see that right there? The one that, if a person leaves the truth, they become a sinner. That's, let him know that he which converteth back, right? The sinner from the error of his way. What's going to happen? He's going to save a soul from death, yes. eternal death, yes. the second death, right? Yes. He'll save a soul from death, and he shall and shall hide a multitude. God forgives. Amen, doesn't he? Yes. If they get converted back, they may have done some horrible, horrible things, but he'll hide a multitude of sins, all those sins that that person once was in the truth and then erred and became a sinner, if you can get him back to the truth, all of that stuff will be hid. It's going to be hid under the blood of Jesus. Right? Come on. It'll be hid under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Lord, God, thank you this morning. God, for moving so wonderfully. You're so kind and so good. I don't know about the rest of these folks, but I feel so very undeserving of your kindness and love that you've shown. God, we need you today. Would you touch us by the word of the Lord that something be said that's going to help us to walk with you. And I ask for grace to minister this morning, Lord. Surely it is grace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I guess I want to teach some. But I... I was in prayer a while ago. This wasn't on my list, but it is what I'm going to talk about. But I wanted to launch off into what we're going to talk about with the Scripture. Amen. Because this Scripture bears out, verse 19 said, 
Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, the truth, and that's what I want to talk about, the truth, the truth, putting the in front of it, not, not a truth, the truth. There is something that is true. You understand? It's not, there's a lot of, of truths, not in the sense of being saved, but, in, you know, if, if I tell you uh, I'm going to go down to Walmart tomorrow at 9, and I go down to Walmart to, to, tomorrow at 9, I, you just heard some truth. I'm not talking about a truth. I'm identifying the truth, the truth. Jesus, when he was before Pilate, when he was before Pilate, fixing to go to the cross, uh, you know, they had done all the things hurting Jesus and, and uh, you know, put him in judgment and, and things, but just prior to going to the cross, he was brought to Pilate. And Pilate was saying, don't you know I have power to crucify you or let you go? And he said, you could have no power against me except it was given to you from above. And then Jesus began to tell him, for this purpose have I come into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. There's the truth. And Pilate, like so many people, are so confused. Pilate said, what is truth? What is truth? Amen. And truth was standing right in front of him. Truth was standing right in front of him. Not a truth, but the truth. The truth. Amen. In fact, John 14, 6, we know this and probably by heart. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. If any of you do err, James said, from the truth. It's important to have the truth. I said it's important to have the truth. And it's very important to be a person of truth. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at John, 1 John, the first epistle of John. <clears throat> chapter 5 and verse number 1 is John in closing his letter out in the last chapter he says whoso believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him loveth Jesus right amen loveth him that uh, everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Well, he said a new commandment I give you that you love one another. If we don't love one another, we're not obeying him, right? Pretty simple. For this is the love of God. You want to know what the love of God is? The love of God is that spirit that we get when we obey his commandments. That's what the love of God is. Amen? But it says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. In other words, that's how we know we love him. Right? It's the love, to show your love for God, that's how you show it. It's not just a warm, fuzzy feeling you feel inside. The way you know you love God is if you obey Him. Don't let that ever pass from you. You see, this word has a spirit to it. This word has a spirit. It is the spirit that was in Jesus. And when you love the word, you love Jesus. And if you don't love the word, you don't love Jesus. 
We've got to love the Word. And His commandments is His Word, right? And I'm not talking about just the Ten Commandments. I'm talking about His Word. Jesus said the wise man builds his house on the rock, which he, that was he that hears His Word and does it. Right? Being totally, completely given to, to Jesus, amen, to, to his truth, to his word, to his teachings, to everything and all things completely, like we talked about uh, some services ago, about taking the lamb in and completely devouring the lamb. That's what they had to do with the lamb in Egypt. They had to take the lamb inside, put the blood on the doorpost. We do that. But we need to also take the lamb inside and completely devour the lamb. That's how we know that we love him. If we don't do that, it's because we don't love Him. We may love other things more than Him. That's how we know what we love. This is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. I want to do them. I'm digging in the Word, trying to find out what pleases Him. That's how you know if you love God. I said, that's how you know if you love God. There's been people that's walked away before. I've heard it, you know how the old saying is, through the grapevine. <laughs> I've heard it, nobody here this morning, but I've heard it. I wish she'd quit preaching about that holiness. <laughs> I preach about holiness because it's in the Word. <laughs> Amen, it's in the Word. That's the part. One cog in the wheel. One cog in the wheel. Amen. And we just, do you see how the Spirit of God was moving in here this morning when they were singing, Holy, holy, holy is His name. There's something about the Spirit of God loves it when we worship Him in the beauty of holiness. In the that says that in the Psalms. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. He loves it. He loves it. If you love, amen. I'm not saying, you know, uh, that the Lord won't ever clean your plow. Amen. Brother George Severs, when I preached, he used to say, that cleaned my plow. <laughs> Well, I'm not trying to step on people's toes, but sometimes the Word of God does step on our toes. It steps on mine sometimes, but you know what? I want it. Amen. Come on, we're washed by the Word. Oh, yeah. Amen. But this is the way we know that we love God. If we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Now, faith has two aspects to it, okay? We have faith to have a move of God. We take God at His word. We believe it. We trust in it. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let His praises ring. And then we sing the chorus, I'm standing Standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. Y'all look like you want me to quit. <laughs> standing on the promises of God. I know I'm not the best singer. I'm trying to make a point, though. We stand by faith on the Word of God, don't we? But there's also, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Well, that's part of it, but part of it is the faith that we are believing the what we are believing the truth that we are believing in Ephesians chapter 4 somewhere around verse 4 it says there's one Lord one faith that means the faith the belief that that we have that Jesus laid out the the truth about him the truth not a truth the truth that truth is the victory that overcomes the world. Come on. That truth. 
Amen. Not a truth, not just one piece of it, amen, or something about it, but having the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen. That's what they make you say in a court of law. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, you know what? We need to live for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Amen? Praise God. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit, capital S, talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. Also in Ephesians 4, it says there's one Spirit. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got the same thing Peter, James, and John got. You may be used in a different manner than which they are used, but it's the same Holy Ghost. It's the same Spirit. It's the same thing that was inside of Jesus. And that's why it makes you, it doesn't force you, amen, but it quickens you to live like Jesus. Amen. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness because, I want you to catch this part. This is what I read all this about, really. The Spirit, capital S, the Spirit, that's the Spirit of God. The Spirit. Everybody say the Spirit. The Spirit right here. That's not your human spirit. That's talking about that Holy Spirit of God that comes inside of your life. Amen? What you receive when you get the Holy Ghost, you receive the Spirit of truth. That's what you get when you receive the Holy Ghost. You have the Spirit of truth inside of you. Amen. Amen. Any man errs from the truth. Amen. And one convert him. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death. Amen. And shall hide a multitude of sins. It's important to stay in the truth. Amen. Because to have the spirit of truth, you've got to stay in the truth. Amen. Jesus himself is the truth. And the spirit that was in Jesus is the spirit of truth. Amen. And when we receive Christ in us, the spirit that comes in us is the spirit of truth. That's what's in us. Amen. Jesus said, Wide's the gate, broad's the way that leads to destruction. And many there will be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow, narrow, picture it in your mind, narrow is the way. And few there be that find it. You've got to understand, this is the path of truth. And how much do you have to have of deception in it to where it's no longer truth? It don't take much. It don't take much. So I'm trying to preach to you this morning, help you to understand. Amen. Try to provoke you to good works, to have you to reach for truth this morning. Amen. Truth. Amen. Not because I said it, but because it's the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Truth. What are you looking for when you're looking for Jesus? Amen. You want to believe in Jesus just like the Bible says. So you will have the truth. Amen. There's a lot of voices. Listen to me. There's a lot of voices in our world. There's a lot of voices in our world. There's a lot of voices that say Jesus. Amen. But when you really... Get into the Word of God. You'll find that oftentimes, not every time, that there's a lot of truth preaching people out there too. But there's a lot that are preaching another gospel. And if you follow, the, if you err from the truth, you understand? I'm telling you, if you err from the truth, <clears throat> amen. The Bible says if a person, a brother, errs from the truth, 
Amen. He becomes a sinner. Does it say that? But if they're able to be restored to the truth, amen. Amen. They'll save a soul from death. So, and it's very serious to err from the truth, folks. That's what I'm trying to point out to you. It's very serious to stay in the truth, amen. Because, like Jesus said, the gate's wide, the gate's broad, and many there be that go in there at. It just takes a little bit to deviate from the truth and step off the path. If you will stay right in harmony with the Word of God, and rightly, you got to understand this, you got to rightly interpret this book. You can make this book say anything that you want it to, but what you're trying to get out of it is the truth. Amen. Come on, what you're looking for is the truth. What's it really saying, amen? amen. What's it really saying? How's it really wanting me to live? The object lesson is to get the truth in us, to have the truth in us, to live by the truth, to walk in the truth. Amen? Because Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth. Amen? This book right here tells about Jesus. Amen? It does, and it tells you everything that Jesus taught. But there's some obstacles sometimes. You've got to understand there's things that tried to get us to deviate from this right here. There's the devil. You know what the biggest tool the devil has? What, what would you say? Huh? Huh? Rationalization. That's a good one. I didn't think of that, but that's true. Rationalizing everything, right? Rationalization. Huh? Huh? The word, the devil used that word, didn't he? The devil even used the word against Jesus. The greatest tool that the devil has had throughout the Bible, and it's, and it's continuously spoken of in the Bible, Old and New Testament, is people that t- don't speak the truth of the word. That, there were people in the Old Testament that wanted to mix God and the world. Come on. And God would not have anything to do with it. He wanted, he, in fact, uh, Paul told Timothy, I believe it was our Titus one, keep thyself pure. Keep yourself pure. Don't let any contaminant come into your walk with God. Amen. But there's things that cause us to try, or try to cause us to deviate from the truth of what the Word of God is really saying. The devil's one of them. And the way that he works most often uh, as far as uh, getting, a, getting us to step aside, he wants us to do uh, like Abner, you know, Joab and Abner. <laughs> Joab had killed Abner's brother because he kept pursuing him. He reached back and stabbed him. And, and the two brothers, Asahel, well, did I say it right, Asahel? Is that the one that died? That's the one that died. The other, he had, there were three brothers. Anyway, Joab, uh, they retreated for a while. And uh, later on, whenever Abner uh, had, I'm going to get the names mixed up. <laughs> praise God. Hey, praise God. Anyway, Abner was uh, the one that had, had reached back and pierced Asahel through with the spear, uh, Joab's brother. Amen. And Joab kept a grudge in him and wanted to kill him. You know, him and his brother, other brother did. And it came to pass when, when uh, Abner was making peace with David, he thought well, everything was good because David had, uh, they were two different kingdoms. And, and uh, David was making peace uh, with Abner. Abner thought everything was well. And Joab tricked him to come in back uh, and, and took him aside. And the Bible says, acting like he was greeting him, you know, and, but instead of greeting him and giving him a, a brotherly hug, he stabbed him under the fifth rib and killed him. And David said, died as a fool dies, died Abner. Your hands weren't tied. I mean, you, you walked right in. Does, I know that Joab was sugarcoating it, you know, 
He, you thought that everything was okay, you know? And, and, and Abner turned around and stabbed him underneath the fifth rib and he killed him. Amen. That's the way the devil works a whole lot of time. He's not going to come up and tell you that he's the devil. The Bible says, in fact, Jesus said that they'll come to you in, as sheep, as wolves in sheep's clothing. Wolves and she- so those are one. That's one of the biggest ways, avenues that the devil tries to lead us astray through the Word of God. And Jesus also said, He said, "Full well reject you the Word of God that you may keep your traditions." There's people that get hung up on traditions instead of walking in truth. And the Pharisees kept, tried to keep the people under those traditions. Amen. And when Jesus came along, he preached the truth to them. He laid it out there. And you know what? That's why he went to the cross. That's what took him to the cross. And it wasn't the publicans and the harlots that took Jesus to the cross. It was the religious folks that did not want the truth. Jesus went about doing good to all that were oppressed of the devil. He found favor with all kinds of people. People loved him and they converted and turned to him. He cast seven devils out of Mary Magdalene. She became one of his most faithful followers. But when it came to the high priest, he was looking for ways to kill him. Right? So false religion, false beliefs looks very religious in the, men, in the eyes of men. But listen to me. If you're not a person of the truth... You'll stay bound and shackled by those things. But what you're looking for when you're searching for God, you've got to be a person that loves the truth. Amen. Amen. When I came to the Lord, listen to me, I had the choice, I came to the choice, and I I just did not know a whole lot about God at that time in my life. I'm not saying I know a lot now. I know a lot more than I used to. But one thing I knew, you know, that God, this word was, was the truth. I didn't know it all. But there came a time when my loved ones, amen, that were brought up, brought up in traditional Christianity, amen, God showed me some truth. And the pressure was on me to stay with them or to walk in the truth that God was showing me. I had a choice to make. And you know what? I took the truth. The Lord showed me these things about baptism in Jesus' name and the Holy Ghost and holiness of life, you know, living godly and and, and, and that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you know what? It agreed with the Word completely. Amen. And I had a choice to make. Everybody left me. They did. They forsook me. My kin folks, you know, and the pressure was on. But I found something. There was something inside me. I can't let this go. I, this is the truth. This is true. This is the right way. This is, I can't let it go. And you know what? It took a while. Amen. Praise God. But, but because I was willing to stand through the fire, amen, he brought me out into a better place. Amen. So that's one thing. The devil uses a false witness whether it's behind a pulpit or wherever it's at. To, the devil uses those things to get you to deviate from the truth. The truth. Amen. Praise God. This world, this word says something about the environment of the world. And the world is the other enemy that tries to get you to step aside. Amen. Amen. Some people say, well, I wouldn't, I'd be an apostolic, but you can't do this and you can't do that. I won't. Listen to me. The only reason I preach against certain things is, is if anything that would lead you astray from this. That's all I care about. I said, that's all I care about. There's certain places. If you're going to walk in this truth, come on. If you're going to walk in this, there's certain places you can't go. There's certain activity you can't be a partaker of. Come on, you can't do it and be in line with this. You can step aside from the truth if you don't live after a certain manner. I'm not just trying to put rules on people. I'm trying to keep people in the truth. 
Come on. And what this really says. And the world has such an environment. It's like an octopus with its tentacles reaching out trying to pull people out. Amen? It's like that. It really is. All kinds of enticement, especially in the day and hour where we have all this technology. There is so much technology that is trying to draw people away. Yeah. <clears throat> it's trying to draw people away. What are you trying to do, brother? Well, I still believe in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I know. I know I'm doing this or I'm doing that. You know? I'm here to tell you something. If this says differently, you better. If you want to keep from erring, because to err means to walk in the path of death. And if there's anything I can do, I'm going to try to get you back so I can save your soul from death and, and, and hide a multitude of sins. Amen. I'm just preaching this morning. Y'all, maybe y'all, I hope every one of you is walking in the straight and narrow. Come on. It's not the hard and narrow. It's straight. I don't... I don't have a hard time living this life. Do y'all have a hard time? I, I like living this way. I really do. I do. Amen. It's only hard if you don't want to do it. Right? I don't have a hard time staying married to my wife. If I didn't want to stay married to her, I'd have a hard time with it. <laughs> oh, praise God. I'm not saying my flesh is good. I'm not saying I don't get tempted. I do get tempted, I'll tell you. But there's a desire in my heart more to please God Amen. and to stay in line with this. Yeah. One of these days, I won't have need to contend with my flesh. One of these days, amen, this mortal man is going to put on immortality. And when I step on the other side, amen, I won't have this weakness to contend with. All I got to do is say no to it now. Don't let it have its way. And just keep walking in the truth and everything will be all right. My heart is to be on the other side with the Lord. I kind of jumped the gun, but that's our third one. That's our third one. The first was the devil, the world, but the biggest one, amen, the biggest one that will lead you astray from the truth is your own will. You, your flesh. I, your flesh does not want to go in the direction of the truth of the Word of God. I'm telling you, there's an element in you, and Jesus knew it. He said he knew what was in man. He knew what was in man. It's in every one of us, folks. I'm not saying that you're a bad person, but there's an element in us. I mean, it's like gravity pulling us down. There's an element in each one of them. When somebody does you wrong, come on, you want to cuss them out. I'm just telling you, I've felt those temptations before. I have felt those. I didn't say I did it. Those impulses, those crave, those desires, passion. There's all kinds of things, avenues in which the, the, the flesh wants to work. Yeah. Amen. And if we follow those things, amen, step aside into those things, what we do is we step aside into error. Error. Amen. And what we're trying to accomplish is to walk in the Word of God. Walk in the truth. Amen. I'm preaching a bunch and not reading a lot of scriptures. I usually read a lot of scriptures, but praise God. <clears throat> amen. What we're trying to do is is uh, walk in the truth. Amen. Jesus is the truth. Amen. Amen. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise, the Lord. praise God. I'm going to get over here. This is some scriptures. I want to turn to 2 John. This is a lot of scriptures. I just typed it out. Sometimes I'm not the fastest scripture turner to. I don't do the best job. So I print them out so I can have them. Amen. Look at the second epistle of John. Read. Look, listen to, listen to, listen to the wording of this right here. Verse number one, second John verse one. The elder, talking about John, unto the elect lady and her children. Now my personal opinion is probably talking to the church, calling her the lady. That's my, per, my opinion. If it was a, a literal person, that's fine too. I don't, that's whatever the word of God says. <clears throat> he says this, the elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the <laughs> I love him the truth. Look how you, you, you might think, he's really fanatic about this. We need to be really fanatic about this, folks. You listen to me. I said we need to really be 
<laughs> fanatic about staying in the truth. John goes on to say, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Known Jesus. Amen. Known the truth. For the truth's sake. There it is again. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth, where's he at? Come on. When we got Jesus inside, we got the truth inside of us. We got the spirit that was in Jesus inside of us. And Jesus called it the comforter. He said it was the spirit of truth. That's what we got inside of us. Amen. For the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you. Mercy, peace from God the Father and the, from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. When they hung Jesus on the cross, that's what they hung on the cross. Truth and love. Amen. That's who he is. That's his spirit. Praise God. Amen. If you don't have that, you don't have Jesus. Because that's what Jesus is. Praise God. <clears throat> In truth and love. I rejoice greatly, John is telling the Christians here, that I found of thy children walking in truth. Now how do you walk in truth? You believe in, in truth. You believe in Jesus. How do you walk in Jesus? Come on. Yeah, live in it. Live in the, that faith, that truth. Amen. Oh, pray. I said living, walking it is living it, not just talking about it. Come on, not just saying I believe in Jesus. John said, I rejoice greatly. I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is the love of here it is again, and this is love, this is love that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Many profess not that, Jesus, that God has come in the flesh. That's what it's talking about. God has come in the flesh. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves. Look to yourself. Pay attention to your walk with God, right? Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine, there's a doctrine about Christ. There's a truth about, a doctrine is a teaching. There's a teaching about Christ. Okay? Whosoever transgresses, in other words, does not do the Word of God, does not live in the Word of God. Right? That's what to transgress is to not walk in the Word of God, not keep with command. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not, abideth means to stay there, right? Come on, pitch your tent there, staying in the truth. Come on, Ab abideth not in the doctrine, in the teaching of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Where's the Holy Ghost there? The topic's not about the Trinity because there's no such thing as a Trinity. The topic here is that Jesus was both God and man. He was Father and Son. Amen? The Father was in uh, the Son, reconciling the world unto himself. There's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. God was manifest in the flesh. Amen. That's who Jesus was. That's what this topic is. And that is the teaching of Christ. Amen. Praise God. You can't have God without the Son of God. Amen. No man comes to the Father but by me, Jesus said. Amen. He was a human. And they tried to stone Jesus because he, being a man, made himself God. Amen. Actually, he was God that made himself into a man. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. That's who he was. Amen. Praise God. But that is the doctrine of Christ. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Not two. One. Amen. That's the doctrine of Christ. And he goes, that's the truth of the Word of God, folks. That is the truth. Don't step aside from that. There's many people preaching other things. Some people do it ignorantly. They just don't know. I was baptized wrong myself one time. 
But I saw the truth. And Jesus said, my sheep, they know the sound of my voice. And another will they not follow. And that voice is the voice of truth. Amen? Come on. That voice is the voice of truth. Somebody that really loves God more than tradition, more than anything else. When they read Matthew 28, 19, and they read all the rest of the scriptures of how the early Christians were baptized in Jesus' name, the, the spirit of truth will bring revelation to their heart if they will receive it. If they are his sheep, they will realize that the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is the name that they baptized in which was in the name of Jesus that is the spirit of truth Amen. come on it takes the spirit of truth to re reveal that but if people are stuck in traditions they will not come to the truth but to be saved and to kept from error we must be brought to the truth amen oh come on we get the spirit of truth amen oh praise God we get the spirit of truth. We got to be people that love the truth. Come on, we got to be people that are searching the scriptures to see whether those things are so. Come on, we got to be people, amen, that want the truth. We buy the truth and sell it not. We got to want truth more than we want anything else in life. Even if it brings my flesh uh, under conviction and I got to get rid of some things to stay in the truth, amen. I want the truth more than I want anything else, amen. I want Jesus. I want whatever's true about Jesus, amen. What the early disciples believed about Jesus was the truth. And I have it right here in this book that we call the Bible. And I want to align my life with this book. Amen. Amen. And it's teaching. It may be outdated to the world, but it's very up to date with God. It's very up to date with God. It's very up to date with God. He does not change. People change. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right. Oh, praise God. He's the same. Oh, hallelujah. He hadn't changed his mind. The only thing he'll change his mind with is if a sinner repents of their sins. If a sinner, amen, will repent of their sins. I've said the scripture a lot. I love the scripture. Isaiah 53. I think it's verse 6. But he says, All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Astray. Right? We erred from the, we've erred. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone unto his own way. That's the way we went astray. And the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. Amen. But if we will repent... If we went astray and a Christian brother can take us and cause us to come to the revelation that we are going astray and what we are following, and if we're walking in error, what we are following is not correct. And if that brother can get us restored back unto the way of the straight and narrow, amen, to believe in Jesus as they originally believed in Jesus, amen. Praise God. We will save a soul from death. Amen. And we'll hide a multitude of sins. Amen. Because the blood of Jesus, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light. We're talking about when the light, we're talking about light, we're talking about truth. If we walk in the truth, at the light, as he is in the light, we have blood, we have a, uh, praise God. I, I got one of the senior moments. <laughs> I'm getting a, if we walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have not sinned, we lie and do not the truth. He's talking about if you're living in sin. If you're living in darkness, walking in darkness, you can say Jesus all you want. But if you want Jesus inside of you, you've got to get out of that dark life. You've got to get in the light. You've got to get in the truth. You've got to live in the truth of the Word of God. Amen? Oh, praise God. But one of the greatest things, the tools that is used that we have trouble with is ourself, folks. Ourself. My biggest issues come from me. 
come from me. Amen. Because often we want to do things. We want to live a certain way. We want to do a certain thing. My flesh has never told me, hey, how about let's fast today? If you ever feel that you need to fast, listen, don't ask God, was that the devil? Don't even let it cross your mind. Is that my flesh talking to me? Don't it? Or I need to pray. Your flesh is not wanting you to get in prayer meeting. Huh? Huh? It's Jesus. That's, that is Jesus. Sometimes he will tell you things. A lot of times he will tell you things. That it is going to take a person that loves what is really right more than he loves or she loves, he loves, more than they love anything else. They want to be close to God because there's an element in each one of us that's going to, listen to me, it's going to want to throw up roadblocks from God against God. When God wants you to do something for Him, God not only wants to save you, but God wants to do something through you. Amen. And we need to make ourselves available to him. Whatever that is. Your flesh is not going to tell you to love somebody. Your flesh is not going to tell you to help somebody. Your, your flesh is not going to tell you to pray for somebody. The flesh is all think, always thinking about me, 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 me. It's all about me. It revolves around me. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. You know what the Spirit will do in your heart and in your life? It will make you come to this church praying and seeking God that your brothers and sisters will be blessed and picked up by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Oh, you'll get blessed too. But you'll find your concerns being on the welfare of the others. That's of the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. What are you looking for? What are you preaching about? I'm preaching about loving the truth, staying in the truth. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of truth. Amen. Amen. The third epistle of John, verse 1. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius. Here it is again. Whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things. Here it is, the welfare of others that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. You think for the welfare of others, don't you? When the Spirit of the Lord is, has its dominion in your life. Then he says, For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou, there it is again, thou walkest in the truth. In you know, Thou walkest in the truth. There it is, the truth. The early apostles believed that there was the truth. It was the one that they had walked with. And everything he taught, everything he established, the early Christians, Paul writing to the, I believe it was the church at Ephesus, says we're built, the Christians are. Other foundation can no man lay, and that is lay, which is Christ Jesus. But he said, and we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, what they taught, in other words. You understand that? What they taught. The church is built on what they taught. Not by tradition of people. Not by tradition of men. But they're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus himself is the chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone was a perfect stone in which the rest of the foundation was laid off of. Perfect stone. It made all of the foundation perfect. We are not the foundation, folks. We're the church. We're the building on top of the foundation. we got to be built on what Jesus gave his apostles and prophets. Come on, which is the word of God. 
Amen. We're built upon that. Built upon that. Yeah, we adhere to the teachings. Amen. Jesus and Matthew, after telling them to go be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus, right? He also said, the next verse said, teaching them. Teach those ones that believe to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The you is the apostles. Teach those that believe in me what I have taught, told you. Tell them to observe all those things. And lo, I'm with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. And the world hadn't ended, so it's still valid. It's still the only church of true church that there is, amen, is the church that's built upon that foundation. That's the only church there is. You, <laughs> you might think I'm a little narrow-minded. Well, I think Jesus was. Straight as the gate, narrow as the way. That's pretty narrow. Amen. If Paul said, there's one body, and that body is not talking about a literal body. Amen. It's talking about one church. The, you're the body of Christ and members in particular. He taught in another place. He's talking about there is one church. Oh, my. I didn't say a denomination. I didn't say an organization. I'm saying there is one church. And that one church, by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Talking about the Holy Ghost baptism. We're born again of water and spirit. That's the only church that God truly has. Amen. It's not a denomination. It's not an organization necessarily. Those are, we're in a great and wonderful organization. I wouldn't be a part of this if they didn't teach the truth. Now, I wouldn't want to be nothing to do with it. Amen. But this is our group of men that preaches, and I'm not trying to preach the UPC. I'm just saying, I believe that there's one body, one church. Amen. And by one spirit, they're talking about the Holy Ghost. That's the capital S again. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. We all have one family name, and that's the name of the one that died for us. Amen? The name of Jesus. Amen? Oh, praise God. Don't walk away from this truth. Don't err from this truth. Amen? Stay in the truth. Amen? Walk in the truth. Live in the truth. Stay in the Word of God. Don't let nothing cause you to step aside from the truth. If it costs you your life, stay in the truth. If nobody likes you for it, stay in the truth. Amen. Not everybody like Jesus. I like you, though. <laughs> I like you. I hope you like me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There will be times, and I'm not trying to preach a pessimistic message, negative message, but there will be times where people, if you don't bend, if you don't cave, they won't like you if you don't. You'll be called all kinds of things. People will tell you you're judgmental, but the truth of the matter is they're judging you. They're saying you're judgmental. Is that true? Huh? The truth of the matter is, on that topic, is that we are not judges. We don't put anybody in heaven or hell. Don't never take that job upon you because it doesn't belong to you. It is not yours to do. <coughs> you may have your opinion. It would probably be best to keep it quiet in some regards. Because ultimately, you do not say who goes into heaven's gates, and you do not say who goes into hell. There's one judge and one lawgiver, James said. But we are fruit inspectors. Jesus told us, you will know a tree by the fruit it bears. Believe not ever spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. So there's a certain amount of judgment in that regard you got to use. Right? Right? So when somebody throws that, you're judging me out. No. Yeah, he the spiritual. 
Yes, this is right. Amen. Praise God. But yes, we are not judging anybody as far as who goes to heaven or hell, who is to be lost or saved. Amen. The word will do that in the end time. Amen. Oh, praise God. But what we need to do is we need to get everybody we can to walk in the truth. And I've done preaching a long time, Hannah. <laughs> we are people of the truth. That's what I'm trying to preach this morning. Love truth. Love truth. Jesus is the truth. Everything about Jesus is the truth. And to go astray, all you got to do is walk away from the truth. You understand that? No, James labeled them sinners. If any go astray, you've got to have first been in there before you went astray. If you was already astray, you'd been already astray. He would have said, if anybody's astray, no, he said, if any of you go astray, and one convert him, one that's not going astray, gets him back into the truth. Come on, get him in the truth. Stay in the truth. Don't walk away from the truth. Don't step away from the truth. Oh, stay in the truth with everything you can. Come on, stay in the truth with everything you can. Because stepping aside from the truth, amen, leads you into that category of sinner. And if someone don't get you back from that place, then you walk in a death sentence. Amen. And a, a multitude of sins will be exposed. But if they can just be brought back. Oh, pray for backsliders. Pray for backsliders, folks. Pray for those that have once known the Lord and are no longer where they need to be with Him. Pray for backsliders. Amen. Amen. If you can get them back, Come on, have compassion on them. Have mercy on them. Come on, it could be any of us. Anybody out there walking aside from the truth, if you can reach for them, if you can help them get back, amen? You'll save a soul from death, and you'll cover a multitude of sins, amen? Amen, stand with me if you would. Praise God, amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Isn't God good? Come on, isn't God good? Isn't God good? Clap your hands to the Lord, amen? I love you, Jesus. Oh, help us to walk in the truth, God. My Lord, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. I'm not going to keep you this morning, amen. But walk in the truth. Live in the truth. Don't let anything get you away from the truth, amen. And grow in the truth, amen. Learn of God, learn of God. Walk with Him, amen. Praise God, amen. Let's pray. Lord, Great God Almighty. <clears throat> Praise God. Would you help us today, Lord? Jesus, great God Almighty. Lord, to walk with you. Lord God, our world is in a mess, Lord. God, help us to be a light for you, a people of truth for you in this dark, dark world that we live in. Help us, Lord, not to blend in but not to be a holier than thou, but be humble and walk with you and help others, God, to find the way, the truth, Lord. Lead others into the way and the path of righteousness and godliness and truth, in the truth of Jesus, lifting you up always, Lord, pointing souls to you, helping others to find you. Help us to do that, oh God. Wherever we find ourselves, beyond these four walls, God, when we're out there in our daily lives, and as we go on our way, help us to remember and help us to reach, God, out to those, God, that don't know you. And help us, Lord, God Almighty. Not, we don't want to be hypocrites, God. Help us to walk humbly with you. and Help us, Lord, to be a, a faithful and true witness for you and stay true to your truth. Stay true to you and lead others in your paths, Lord. God, would you do that for us? Great God Almighty, we thank you for all your goodness and all you've been for, to us, Lord. And I pray that you'll keep us until we return here, Lord, and keep your people in Jesus' name. Praise God. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love one another. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. 
Praise God. Praise the Lord. That old daughter from my wife had that old surgeon he had some big old hand on mm -hmm. like you got. Yeah. He said that on each side of her throat was about the size of a fist. Man. And it had gone up toward her ears. That mm -hmm. knoll was up there. Oh wow. They expected us to come out in about forty five minutes. It took two and a half hours. Wow. So well thank the Lord it's out. Thank the Lord. Well, she, yeah. She can't talk, so she knows. Well, we're praying for her. We're praying for her. Mm -hmm. 